Well, let me host. <clears throat> Guess who's coming to say hi? Summer cat. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you for the hugs. You want to read the boys a story? Hmm? If they want to hear one. All right, well, you're going to have to get down. Okay? Okay, get up. Mm -mm. Today's story is The Monster Who Came to Tea. Is that the shadow of the monster? <clears throat> Take a deep, relaxing breath. Snuggle down and listen carefully to this tale about five children who spent the summer with their aunt who lived deep inside a great wood. One day, the children decided to play at being, being explorers, but they didn't like what they found. What do you think it was? Let's read the story and find out. It was a beautiful sun, sunny afternoon, and the children asked if they could go outside to play. Of course, just don't go too, too far, Aunt Dottie warned. Tea won't be long. But Freddie, Molly, Ginger, Trolley, and Little Nut the youngest, were already zooming up and down the lawn chasing each other. Freddy, who was the eldest, found a ball in the shrubbery and called for a game of catch. The children were having a wonderful time until Freddy threw the ball so high it flew ab above the other children's outstretched fingers. It whizzed out of the garden and into the dark wood beyond. We had better go fetch it, sighed Molly. Little Nut wasn't sure that was such a good idea. She didn't like the look of all those tall, scary trees. Auntie said not to go too far, she reminded them. There could be monsters. Don't worry, I'll look after you, said Freddy, scooping her up onto his shoulders. Let's imagine we're explorers deep in the jungle, said Ginger. In search of ancient treasure, added Molly. Come on, then, called Freddy, leading the children away from the cottage. It's spooky in here, whispered Nut as they made their way further into the forest. What was that? squeaked Trolley, grabbing Ginger's arm as something squawked overhead. Just a bird, said Ginger reassuringly, trying not to sound scared herself. I don't like this. I want to go back, said Trolley. Just a bit further, this is exact. Uh. But Freddy's voice trailed off. Something very large was crashing through the trees toward them. The children stared at each other. Run! shouted Freddy, and they all scattered in different directions. Freddy, who was still carrying Nut, crashed behind the nearest bush. The ground shook. I knew there'd be monsters in here, whispered Nut. Shh! whispered Freddy. He lifted Nut so that she could peer around the bush. She caught sight of a huge log-like monster thumping down on the ground and clamped her hand over her mouth so as not to scream. Freddy looked up. He saw a long gray snake waving its head high above him and yelled a warning. A snake! A snake! Meanwhile, Molly had climbed into a tree. She held her breath and peeked peeked around the tree trunk. She saw a big greenish-brown eye staring at her. A monster, she screeched. She was so surprised she fell out of the tree and landed in, a, in the deep, soft undergrowth. Hurrah, roared the monster. Aunt Dottie was just taking a cake out of the oven for tea. Hearing the noise, she turned her head and looked up. That's Mr. Titch, she said to herself. I must introduce him to the children. Then she went back to her cake. Meanwhile, Ginger was shaking with fright. He had heard the hurrah, too, and had hidden behind a bush. His body was hidden, but his legs stuck out. A big, slobbery thing rolled over them. A slug-like gray tongue was licking his legs. Then off it slurped, leaving his knees covered in glistening slime. Yuck, he squealed. 
trolley hid behind, hid beside a tree as the thing lumbered away into the shadows. As soon as it was out of sight, he jumped down. It's a big, it's a huge boulder, he said, crushing everything in its path. Back in the kitchen, Aunt Dottie had just finished decorating her cake with strawberries. She put it on a plate and carried it into the garden. Come on, children, she hollered. Relieved to hear their aunt, they crashed through the trees toward her voice. Help, a monster! A monster, said Aunt Dottie in surprise. It was a massive slimy slug, said Ginger. It was an alien with a big brown eye, insisted Molly. It was a giant boulder rolling through the wood and crushing everything in its path, argued Tro Trolley. No, it was the biggest snake ever, cried Freddy. It was a huge gray, huge gray log monster, piped up Little Nut. Hmm, Aunt Dottie tried to speak, but she was drowned out by the clamor of the arguing children. Finally, when no one could hear what anyone was saying because everyone was shouting at the same time, Aunt Dottie whistled very loudly. The children fell so, fell slight. The children fell. The children fell silent. That's true. <laughs> I don't know why that was difficult. What if each of you is right? Aunt Dottie asked. We can't all be right. There must have been five monsters, said Ginger, glancing warily at the trees. Let's think, said Aunt Dottie. What would you get if you made all five of your monsters into one big one? The children shuddered at the thought of the terrifying monster that would make, but Aunt Dottie laughed. Look, she said, pointing toward the wood. The children turned and gasped. A wrinkly gray elephant was strolling through the trees on his big stumpy feet. His brown eyes sparkled like gemstones, and his slippery tongue lolled out of his mouth as he rumbled along like a boulder, happily swinging his long trunk. I'd like you to meet my old friend, Mr. Titch, beamed Aunt Dottie. I should have warned you. He always wanders over from the circus on the other side of the wood when he smells me baking cakes. Hurrah, said Mr. Titch in agreement. We were all right, laughed Freddy. We each saw different parts of Mr. Titch. I'm sorry, said Molly. I should have listened to you. We should have listened to each other, said Ginger. At least he's not a real monster, whispered Nut. Hurria, said the elephant, and he picked up a slice of Aunt Dottie's cake with his trunk and ate it in one gulp. That was pretty cool. It's important to listen to other people's opinions. A wise person knows we need to consider other viewpoints as well as as well as our own to discover the truth. Yes, that's true. Because just because you know uh, you know something that happened doesn't mean that you know all of what happened. So it's like I am always telling you guys. I'll just say, well, if that were true, then what else is true? So just because you're right doesn't mean somebody else is wrong. You just have to look at it in a certain way. Okay, mijos, I love you. And I'm going to try to go to bed. I know, I'm up too late. Shh. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> Love you, boys. Good night.